We have an update now on David Letterman's bombshell admission that he had affairs with women on his staff and that he was allegedly being blackmailed over those affairs by a CBS producer. CBS News correspondent Bianca Solorzano is here with the latest. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Maggie. David Letterman's on-air admission last Thursday gave The Late Show a 38% ratings boost over the same night a week ago. But whether he'll suffer any long-term damage, especially from female viewers, remains to be seen. Meanwhile, new details about the affairs have emerged. From out of the shadows and into the headlines, the identities of two women who allegedly had affairs with the Late Show host. There we go, 74 year old Late Show staffer Stephanie Burkett is a former assistant to David Letterman. The relationship is said to have ended before Letterman was married. Until last month, Burkett was also the live in girlfriend of Joe Halderman, the 48 Hours mystery producer accused of trying to blackmail Letterman over the affairs for $2 million. A second alleged romance was with Holly Hester, a former Late Show intern in the 1990s. She told the website TMZ.com, I was madly in love with him at the time and would have married him. He was hilarious. You do it. Halderman is now free on $200,000 bail, and he was suspended from CBS News. His co-workers are in shock. Well, I was stunned. Including former colleague Dr. Bob Arnott. Joe has been one of my best friends. Uh, he's been one of the most uh, upright, honest, straightforward, honorable human beings uh, that I've ever known. Sunday's New York Post reported that Letterman's office in the Ed Sullivan Theater, off limits except to a select few, had a bedroom with a pull-out couch. Sources confirm the couch in his office but deny there is a private bedroom. Maggie? Bianca Solorzano, thank you, Bianca. Gerald Shargell is Joe Halderman's attorney, and he joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I know Good. that your client has pleaded not guilty. Yes. How do you explain the supposed proof, the recorded conversations, the phony $2 million check he allegedly tried to cash? Well, th th first of all, this is so obviously out of character. Anyone who know jo knows Joe Halderman knows that this is completely out of character, um, to the point of not making any sense, if, if you think about it. Here's a guy who's an Emmy award-winning uh, journalist who has dealt with cops and wiretaps and, and under, undercover investigations Someone virtually his entire it. life. right? And, and uh, the claim is that he intended to extort David Letterman in, in, in the way that, that, that uh, is claimed. Um, look at the fact uh, that there was a, a $2 million check uh, in the history of extortion, I don't think there's been a single case where the alleged extortionist uh, took a check in payment. Uh, it, it, it's, it simply, uh, it just so doesn't make any sense. you did not sense. take the check? No, I'm not saying you didn't take the check. But the question at the end of the day is what was his intent? Um, one of the things that the prosecution has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, one of the elements of the offense is that Joe Holderman had specific criminal intent. And uh, I, I uh, say to you and I say to the public that uh, we shouldn't rush to judgment because I think at the end of the day, when the case is tried and after the cross-examination of David Letterman and the full story comes out, I'm confident that a jury will not find that specific criminal intent. What was his intent? Well, here's the point. Uh, I'm in day four uh, of the case. Uh, well, this what is he literally you, the, the fourth. Well, you, you don't really expect me to discuss with well, him. Well, I want you to give us we an to idea with you what he, to what counter he, what we've been hearing in the press. All I'm saying is don't rush to judgment. All I'm saying is look at the character of, of uh, uh, Joe Halderman. Uh, look at the fact that so many in, at, in, at this network who have worked with him over the years, who have known him literally for decades, have said that this is completely out of character with anything they know about uh, Joe Halderman. He is a decent, competent individual who has never uh, uh, displayed any uh, propensity or, or uh, uh, indication of wrongdoing, and he's entitled to the presumption of innocence, and that's all I'm asking for at this point. It Did would be he? impossible, if I may, it would be impossible for any responsible lawyer to, to appear here and discuss the details either of what his client told him or, or what the defense is. But I, I just want to say to the public, don't rush to judgment. All right, Mr. Shargell, thanks. Thanks Thank for coming you. in.